So this map is an equidistant projection, but what about direction? Well, it turns out that this projection type is also known not only as a planar projection, but as an azimuthal projection. And azim azimuths are related to direction, and so that gives us something we can talk about in terms of like, why is it called an azimuthal projection? What does that mean? How does that relate to direction? Well, let's, let's have a look. So azimuths relate to direction. If I try to tell somebody what direction they need to go in to get from point A to point B, that has to be in reference to some standard uh, reference line. I don't want to call it a standard line because that's something different. So that's a line connecting A to B, but what's the direction of that line? Well, typically what we would do is talk about the angle of that line in relation to a line that goes true north. So in this case, that's a 45 degree angle. We would say that that is an azimuth of 45 degrees. In other words, if I'm at point A and I want to get to point B, I could take a direction or an azimuth of 45 degrees and that would get me there. Now, this is generally true for uh, small areas. I mean, if you're kind of taking a hike or you know um, something like that, then that would be correct. But what happens when we talk about azimuths and directions on a map projection for a, a larger area? This brings us to a discussion of things like the great circle routes and navigation. Um, so let's just kind of talk about that for a minute and how this relates to projections and directions. So the great circle route between any two points is a line that goes along a plane and that plane cuts through the center of the earth. And really that's kind of a complicated way of saying it's the shortest distance between two points over the surface of the earth, following the curvature of the earth if you want. So if I wanted to get from New York to London, whether it's by plane or by boat, uh, it would follow the great circle route in order to get there as the shortest distance. So this line is actually a curved line over the, the curvature of the earth, and that's actually the shortest distance between these two points, the great circle route. Just to visualize this a bit better, this is the same line from a different angle. And so this is New York to London. And so that curved line, I'm hoping you're seeing this, is that's the great circle route, is that's actually following the curvature of the earth, and that's the, the most direct route you can take to get from one point to another, okay? Now, that may be the shortest route, but it can actually be a little more complicated in terms of navigation to follow that great circle route. If we zoom in a little bit here and look at the same line, so this is from New York to London, what you'll notice is that if you were to describe the azimuth, in other words, the direction that you have to take. Remember, the definition of an azimuth is that it's the angle in relation to a line that goes directly north. And so these red lines all point directly north. Isn't that funny? It looks kind of weird, doesn't it? But if you remember, these are meridians. Meridians all travel towards the North Pole. So if you're um, looking at these lines, you're seeing that that's an angle, that's an azimuth between the route that we're taking and true north. This is an angle between the route we're taking and true north and so on. But the thing is that these are all different angles because the lines are converging. That's not, that's not a mistake. That's not something that's wrong. It's just a fact of life that these meridians are all curved. And so the, the angles that we're using to navigate, if I was say sailing a ship, and trying to figure out what bearing to go on or what azimuth to take to navigate, I'd have to keep shifting that um, or adjusting it because these angles, these azimuths, are all different. Okay, so why am I telling you all this? Well, it has to do with azimuths and directions and, and projections, as you'll see. So along comes this guy named Gerardus Mercator, and he invented a long time ago uh, a map projection that kind of solved this problem. It made navigation a lot easier, and how that worked was is that he made it so that the azimuths were constant. But, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just have a look at this. On the Mercator projection, this is the great circle route. It is not, on this projection, it's not a straight line, but that is actually the shortest distance between these two points. It's still the same line I was showing you a minute ago, but it just looks different. And that's because the projection has actually curved it out. Let me show you what I mean. So here's that line as a straight line distance. That's the great circle route between the two points using what is meant to look like a reference globe with no distortion. And if just watch, if we take that same line and use the Mercator 
projection. Remember that it's stretching the lines out. They're no longer meeting at the poles. They're becoming parallel to one another. So that, that line is kind of being bent or curved upwards in the way that it's being shown. The actual distance on the ground isn't changing. That's still the great circle route. It's still the shortest distance. But the way it's being shown in the projection has made it look like it's a curved line. Okay, so if that's what's happening with the Mercator projection, which I'm showing here, what if you do draw a straight line between two points? Your brain wants to think that that's the shortest distance, but it's actually not. It's a RUM line, as it's called. So that's, that's the term down here, R-H-U-M-B. And that's a line of constant bearing um, that you can draw on the, the uh, curvature of the Earth or on a projection. So you'll see here, well, actually, I've got it like this, that now the azimuths along this rum line are constant. So if you wanted to sail a ship from New York to London, theoretically, you could set it to that one direction, that one azimuth, and follow that, and you would get where you wanted to go. You wouldn't have to worry about adjusting it along the Great Circle route. It would be a much simpler way of navigating. And so that's why the Mercator projection became so popular with sailors at the time, is that uh, this hadn't been done before, and it simplified navigation quite a bit. You could just sort of set it and forget it, if you, if you will. So, so the, the, the price that's paid for that, though, is that the rum line is longer than the Great Circle route. So yes, it's simpler, but it means you have to travel a bit farther to get where you want to go. So there's a price there. So there's the Great Circle route. That's the shortest distance, believe it or not. And then the rum line is the, the simplest route in terms of the direction, but it's a longer distance. And if you don't believe me, let's have a look at it. Here's the Great Circle route in red on our globe. And the rum line is the one of constant distance, or sorry, constant direction or azimuth uh, in yellow. And then when we put those on the Mercator projection, our straight red line becomes a curved line here. And I actually did this with the software. It was calculated correctly. There's nothing that's wrong. It just looks different depending on what projection you're looking at. And so it's important when you're, you know, looking at these kinds of things. One of these, one of the reasons I'm telling you about this is I think it's interesting and it's useful in terms of just understanding how uh, the navigation has evolved and, and how maps are made. But it also, I think, really uh, impresses upon you, I'm hoping, that if you understand what's happening here and why these lines look the way they do, then you also understand how projections work and distortion works and how the reference globe works. It's all tied together. These concepts are all related to one another. And to me, it's kind of a nice way of encapsulating these ideas. And uh, if you can explain this to somebody, if it makes sense to you, then it means that you've understood a lot of the stuff that we're talking about in this whole section on projections. One note about the Mercator projection and navigation is I said earlier that if you followed the rum line, it was simpler, but it was a longer distance. So a strategy that sailors would actually use is to approximate the Great Circle distance by breaking it into smaller rum lines. So you can see here that this is a rum line, this is a rum line, this is a rum line. And so they would only have to set their uh, compass to an azimuth three times, so one, two, three. And so you'd get the benefits of not having to constantly shift the azimuth and you'd still be able to cut down on your distance. Now, whether they did it three times or five or whatever, that's up to them, but you get the idea that this is a strategy to be able to kind of combine a bit of the best of both. You're getting the navigational simplicity, but still being able to approximate a great circle route.